Welcome back. Last time we showed control signals coming out of the air. Here we show where they really come from. Most of the control signals, shown in blue, come out of the main control unit. The input to the control unit is the opcode. That means that most of the control signals are determined solely by the opcode. Most of the control signals are one bit. The exception is ALU op, which is a two bit control signal that goes into the smaller ALU control unit. The other input to ALU control is the function field. The output of ALU control is a four bit field that tells the CPU what to do. The ALU op from the main control unit to the ALU control is 00, zero for a load store, 01 for a branch, and 10 for an R type instruction. For an R type instruction, the function field, which is the lower six bits of the instruction, is used to determine the output control signal. The four bit ALU control signal in this reduced instruction set indicates one of five actions. Add for load word or store word since the ALU adds the immediate field to the RS register for based index addressing mode. For a branch equal, it's subtract. It needs to subtract the two operands to see if they're equal. And for the R type, it's either add, sub, and, or, or SLT in this reduced instruction set used in chapter four. The table shows the control signal settings for the four types of instructions, R type, load word, store word, and branch equal. Some of the control signals go into multiplexers to control data flow. Examples of these are regdest, ALU source, mem to reg, and branch. Others control read-write access to data memory and the register file and two form the two-bit ALU op. Next we look at each of these control signals in more detail. RegDest determines which register, RT or RD, is the destination register. For a load word instruction, the destination register is RT. So the destination register is picked off from bits 20 to 16. Notice that the arrow is pointing to zero which tells you that the control signal is zero for load word. For an R-type instruction, the destination register is RD, so the destination register is picked off from instruction bits 15 through 11. Notice the arrow is pointing to one, so you know the control signal is one for an R-type instruction, which is confirmed by looking down at the table. The table shows don't cares, for store word and branch equal, since these instructions do not write back to the register file. The red write signal is one for instructions that write back to the register file, like load word and R instructions, and it's zero for instructions that do not write back to the register file, store word and branch equal. This is easy to remember. Just think of zero as false and one is true and ask yourself if the instruction writes back to the register file. ALU source controls the multiplexer to the left of the ALU. For all instructions, RS is the first operand into the ALU. The second ALU operand depends on the instruction type. For R type or branch instructions, the second operand is RT, which comes from the register file. Notice that the arrow points to zero and that the table also indicates that this control signal is zero for these instructions. For a load word or store word, the second operand comes from the sign extended lower 16 bit immediate field of the instruction. Notice the arrow is pointing to one and the table also shows one as a control signal. PC source controls the multiplexer that updates the PC. If the instruction is not a branch, then branch equals zero, and the output of the AND gate will be zero, which means that the PC will be updated by four as usual. If it is a branch instruction, a one goes into the AND gate. 
The other input to the AND gate comes from the zero flag of the ALU. If the register comparison was zero, meaning the two registers are equal, then zero equals one, both inputs to the AND gate are one, its output is one, and the PC will be updated to the branch target address calculated by the adder, which implements PC relative addressing mode. MemRead is 1 for load word, which reads data from memory, and 0 for all other instructions, since they don't have permission to read from memory. Likewise, MemWrite is 1 for store word, and 0 for all other instructions, since they don't have permission to write to data memory. Store word writes the value in RT to the address calculated by the ALU. The final control signal is mem to reg. This control signal controls the multiplexer to the right of data memory. Notice that the output of that multiplexer goes back to the right data of the register file. The two inputs come from the ALU result and data memory. If mem to reg is 1, then what is written back to the register file comes from data memory as a result of a load word instruction. If mem to reg is zero, then what is written back to the register file is the result of an R-type instruction. For store word and branch equal, we have don't cares because these instructions don't have permission to write back to the register file anyway, as you can see in the reg write signal. Here's the truth table for the main control unit, showing that the input is the 6-bit opcode and the outputs are determined by the opcode. As we discussed in the digital logic video, any logic that can be expressed in a truth table can be expressed in combinational logic. We'll take a look at the combinational logic of the main control unit later. The book shows updates to the CPU if we wanted to add a jump instruction to our reduced instruction set. The main differences are some complications to the circuitry computing the PC. Here we see the pseudo-direct addressing mode implemented for the jump. I'm just showing this as a preview for your reading assignment. All other diagrams for class and test will not have the jump. What we're talking about is a simple MIPS implementation on a reduced instruction set that uses one very long instruction cycle for every instruction. In this implementation, the CPU can only work on one instruction at a time, and the clock cycle has to be long enough for the slowest instruction, which is load word. Load word takes the longest because it has to do five different things sequentially. Notice that all instructions do the first three steps of instruction fetch, register read, and ALU operation. Only some instructions access data memory and some write back to the register file. It's only the load word that does all five of those in sequence, so it takes 800 picoseconds. Even though a branch could finish in 500 picoseconds, it won't because every instruction finishes in one clock cycle. The table is helpful, but you don't need to memorize it. The control signals here you can figure out by just asking yourself true-false questions. Does this instruction have permission to write to memory? Does it have permission to read from memory? Does it write to the register file? Is it a branch? These control signals don't need to be memorized either because you can trace which lines point to 0 or 1 in the multiplexer to determine what the control signal should be. For example, for regdes, the RD field points to 1 for R instructions and the RT field points to 0 for load word. For ALU source, the RT out of the register file points to the 0 in the multiplexer and the sign extended 16-bit immediate field points to 1. For mem to reg what was read from data memory points to the 1, and what comes out of the ALU points to the 0. As an exercise, you should see if you can determine the control signals for the four types of instructions without looking at the table. Now I want to show you a really cool feature in MARS. 
Here I have an add instruction, an R-type instruction. I'm going to go to a symbol, tools, MIPS x-ray, and it pops up this peak inside the CPU. I hit connect to MIPS, and now I can single step through that add instruction. Notice that the parts of the decoded instruction are color coded. The magenta goes into the main control unit. RS is read directly into the ALU. RT is read after it comes through this multiplexer. The ALU calculates a value and writes it back to the register file. And meanwhile, the PC is updated by four. If we right click on the control unit, it pops up the circuitry that could be used to implement the control unit of combinational logic. Notice that this first AND gate here has every input inverted, so an input of all zeros would make this line 1. Here, 1s are indicated by red, so you can see how the control signals are set to either 1 or 0 based on the instruction type. There's also circuitry shown in some of the other items that you can click on.